Hi folks, welcome back to the concluding video for our 12.2 material, uh, which is basically an intro to trig identities and equations, and also angles and standard position. Um, so here are some properties that we know at this point. If you have a unit circle, that means one with a radius of one. Okay. Its equation is x squared plus y squared equals one. We've defined that. That actually comes from Pythagorean theorem. Every point on that circle comes from a triangle with a width of x and a height of y. So, of course, from Pythagorean's theorem, we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared, or x squared plus y squared equals 1. Okay, so that stuff is just happens to be true. And then once we have all that, the x value on the uh, unit circle we know is going to be cosine. The y value is going to be sine. And y over x is tan. So given those properties, here are some corollaries. And corollaries are things that follow from a theorem. The theorem is the big thing or the big property that you prove. And then you get these sort of offshoots of things that therefore must be true. So here's one of them. If y over x is tangent and uh, y is sine and x is cosine, then tangent can take this definition. Meaning that the real building blocks of trig are just the two ratios of sine and cosine. You can get away with just those two. Um, another thing that we get is if x is cosine of theta, some angle, and y is sine of some angle, and we're talking about the same angle here, then the cosine of some angle squared plus the sine of that same angle squared must equal 1 all the time. Now, there's special notation for cos theta all squared. It's written like this, cos squared theta. It's kind of a horrible notation, because hey? it's not clear what is being squared. It's certainly not the angle. You find the cosine, and then you square it. And often, this is written the other way around, as sine squared plus cos squared. It doesn't matter what order you put them in. And it can also be rearranged. So that sine squared theta can be written as 1 minus cos squared theta. Okay. I'm going to rewrite that just so it's clear that that's a sine squared, not a sine of 2 theta. Sine squared theta equals 1 minus cos squared theta. Or if I took this one and I moved the sine squared to the other side, I'd get cos squared theta is 1 minus sine squared theta. These are little sort of puzzle pieces that we can use to, to rearrange and to figure out missing bits. Um, and trig works very much that way, where you can have multiple ways of representing a graph, and you can also represent complicated stuff by adding together essentially just basic building block sign graphs. These identities can help us generate other trig values when we know one value. They're not the only way to get there, um, but they can be really helpful. So for example 3, we're saying, suppose sine theta is 3 fifths where theta is obtuse. Now let's be clear. Obtuse means between 90 and 180 degrees. In other words, in standard position, it's somewhere over here in this quadrant. So does it make sense that sine is positive? Heck yes, sine is positive in the second quadrant. Let's find cos theta. So we know sine, we want cos theta. Oh my gosh, look at this lovely formula that we just developed. It's got sine and cosine in it, so if I know one, I should be able to find the other. Let's think about this. Sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals one. This is in your formula booklet. That means that 3 fifths squared plus cos squared theta is going to be equal to one. Or 3 fifths squared, that's 9 twenty fifths, plus cos squared theta is, I'm going to have to add and subtract some uh, fractions here, so I'm going to just write the number 1 as 25 over 25. And now I'll move things around, because I want to isolate cosine. So I'll move that and subtract 9 twenty fifths. That's going to give me cos squared theta is 16 twenty fifths. Okay. And remember, that means cos theta all squared. So 
So you can probably guess what we're going to do next. We want to find cosine theta. We need to square root both sides. And from quadratic stuff, we remember that when you square root both sides, you have to consider the positive or the negative. Okay? So cosine might have been positive 4 fifths or negative 4 fifths. Can we narrow down which one it is? I think in this case we can because we know it's in this second quadrant. And in that second quadrant, cosine is negative. So since we're in quadrant 2, in, I'll just say Q2, okay, because theta is obtuse. Cosine is negative, so it's going to be negative 4 fifths. Cosine is negative in that quadrant. Okay, so we've narrowed it down. We could have also used a triangle to do this, um, but I kind of like doing the identity. Plus, it gets us used to this new technique. And then it asks us to find the tangent of theta. Let's see if we can use our new fancy definition. The tangent is sine over cosine. So the tangent of theta is going to be 3 fifths divided by negative 4 fifths, because cosine we just found was negative 4 fifths. Now remember how we divide fractions. We flip and multiply. It is a property, though, that if they both have the same denominator, they're just going to divide out. And that's going to give us these fives will divide out. It's going to give us negative 3 quarters. And we should write it that way, negative 3 quarters, not 3 over negative 4. Um, because we like to have positive denominators. There we go. We solved a little logic puzzle. We only knew sine, and now we know all three trig ratios because of the quadrants we're in and the identities we have to play with. You can find some practice material on page 517, number 5. Uh, good luck with the material, folks, and take care.